All that you have done to us, O Lord, you have done with true judgment, for we have sinned against you and not obeyed your commandments. But give glory to your name and deal with us according to the bounty of your mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Welcome to Mass on this 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Vivian Clancy. But because today is um, St Vincent de Paul, um, we remember in our prayers the students and form tutors from St Thomas More High School who are in St Vincent's house, that they may model his generosity and aspire to serving each other and their fellow men and women. As we therefore come before God, we do so as sinners. Let us contemplate and confess our sins before God, granting his mercy and forgiveness. I confess. Amen. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most. <coughs> With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises as to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. You object. What the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel. Is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law-abiding and honest, he deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember your mercy, Lord. Remember, Remember your, your mercy, mercy, Lord. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. Remember, Remember your mercy, Lord. 
Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth. In your love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercy, Lord. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. Remember your mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and said to the first, My boy, you go and work in the vineyards today. He answered, I will not go but afterwards thought better of it and went. The man went and said the same thing to the second, who answered, Certainly, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first, they said. Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you, a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him, and yet the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Even after seeing that, you refused to think better of it and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Conversion stories are very edifying. Last week at Shubury, I was speaking about the conversion of... Brain's just gone dead. Oscar Wilde. On his deathbed, very dramatic and controversial. Today I want to speak about another conversion, but a man who said of himself that he was the most reluctant convert in the whole of England... His name is C.S. Lewis. You will know him probably for his writing of the Narnia series, but also during the Second World War, he wrote many Christian monologues as an apologist for the faith in those dark days. But Lewis was brought up in the heartlands of Protestant Northern Ireland, but rejected his faith as a teenager. His reaction to the faith wasn't helped by his experience as a soldier on the Battle of the Somme in the First World War. But when he became an academic in Oxford and professor of English literature, his close friend J.R.R. Tolkien took him under his wing, though he had been warned against him because Tolkien was a Catholic. They spent many nights drinking in the Eagle and Child pub, comparing their stories and writings, and often later into the night in their university rooms. But one night after Tolkien's evangelising 
seemed to click. The scales fell from Lewis's eyes, and it all began to make sense. Later in life, he wrote, You must picture me alone in that room in Magdalen College, night after night, feeling, whenever my mind lifted, even for a second from my work, the steady, unrelenting approach of him whom I so earnestly desired not to meet. That which I greatly feared had at last come upon me. In the Trinity term of 1929, I gave in and admitted that God was God and knelt and prayed. Perhaps that night, the most dejected and reluctant convert in all England. I did not then see what is now the most shining and obvious thing, the divine humility which will accept a convert even on such terms. The prodigal son at least walked home on his own feet, but who can duly adore that love which will open the high gates to a prodigal who is brought in kicking and screaming, resentful and darting his eyes in every direction for a chance of escape? This was Lewis at his most desperate but most relieved that God had opened the gates of heaven to him, as Jesus promises to the tax collectors and prostitutes, those most despised in his own time. Life for Lewis was bleak. He said, nearly all I loved I believed to be imaginary. Nearly all that I believed to be real I thought grim and meaningless. After his conversion, he was able to say, Christianity is God expressing himself through what we call real things, namely the actual incarnation, crucifixion and resurrection. I've often read Lewis's conversion story, which you can read about in his book, Surprised by Joy, as something akin to our Gospel reading today. The reluctant worker is praised by his father because he sets to his task despite his apparent and initial apathy. Jesus scolds the religious people of his day for not recognising in John the Baptist one who had been sent by God to bear witness to the truth. Nor the truth of God incarnate stood before their very eyes. The knowledge and observance of the law amongst the Pharisees and scribes were extensive but superficial, and they despised sinners. Those who are commended are the ones, whilst having little affiliation with the Jewish faith, would in the final reckoning enjoy the fruits of salvation, because they recognised Jesus for who he truly was, and they knew their need of him. The God who entered our humanity, that we might share his divinity, often has his greatest appeal amongst the poor, the meek, the sick and the lowly, for they have little else to call security. Lewis was a man of considerable private means. He was not poor, at least not in money, but he was in spirit and hard in heart. But he has some beautiful words to say about God many years after his conversion. He says, The hardness of God is kinder than the softness of men, and his compulsion is our liberation. The hardness of God is kinder than the softness of men, and his compulsion is our liberation. To be drawn into the life of God by faith, and submission is not to be harnessed like an animal. We are set free to be ourselves, to be truly human being. When we offer ourselves to God afresh, be prepared and surprised by joy, even if at times your faith is a little reluctant and disjointed from the rest of your life, like the faithful son in the Gospel. Be faithful to God in ways you have been taught by the church, and things that are known well to you 
will from time to time shine forth and surprise you. The experience of private prayer, the sacraments, particularly the Mass, from time to time open up to us the gates of heaven and show us who we are before God. Don't be afraid to share your faith by words and actions. Who knows, you may help convert someone like C.S. Lewis. Thanks be to God. So we stand and proclaim together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid upon us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. 
For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For then we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those that you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings 
with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servant, servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life, but only say the word, and the soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me, 
to be separated from you. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.